Hi there, it's Sue, and thanks for joining me for Tips and Talk Day. These are bite-sized topics that I pull from community questions and things that I'm observing in the world of handmade small business. If you'd like to submit a topic, DM me over on Instagram at giftbizunwrapped. People are coming over to your website. You know that's happening because you're seeing it in Google Analytics, but they're not buying. So you're getting the eyeballs on your site, and for whatever reason, they're not converting over the sales. Why? Why is that happening? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I want you to think of your website as your online headquarters. Your website should be the home base where you direct everybody to go because they're going to learn about you. They're going to see your products. If you have a blog, everything should be housed on your website. And the reason I'm bringing that up for conversation right now is with the addition of social media and the ability to sell on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, pretty much everywhere these days, the lines start to get blurred. It's kind of like when Kmart years ago started adding grocery. It was like, okay, do I go to Kmart for t-shirts or do I go to Kmart for apples? Are you a grocery store? Are you general merchandise? What are you? That's the exact same thing that's happening online here because your website, as I was just saying, should be your home base, but you start thinking a little differently when you can be like, well, but I can sell on Facebook and I can sell on Instagram. I want us to all firmly understand that your online presence, your main spot online is your website. I'm not talking about here all of the elements that you should have included on your website. I'm more going to talk about things that might prevent people from actually buying from you once they arrive on your website. Okay, so not all the preliminary things like posts you might put on social media directing people to your website. I'm talking about once they actually get there. Okay, so you've got people coming to the website. You know that they're looking at other pages. You can see all of this behind the scenes in your Google Analytics, but no orders are coming in. Here are seven things to check and maybe tweak a little bit to affect sales. These are things that will prevent sales from happening. First one, first impressions. When someone lands on your website, what's the first impression that comes up? Do they understand exactly what you do, what you stand for, what you make, and what you offer? And that's really easy to get across when you have the banner image that shows products. I should be able to know from the second that I get on your website what you're all about. I also should feel comfortable knowing that I've landed in the right place because what I'm expecting to see, let's say you're transitioning over from social media onto the website. It should make sense because the colors look the same, the products look the same. There's enough similarity between the two that they know they've landed in the same place. So this is point number one. Do they get it? The second that they're on the website, within literally three seconds, do they understand who you are and what you stand for? The second place where things can fall apart on a website are pictures. Quality of pictures are all important. And I'm not saying that you need a professional photographer to get your pictures taken. You can do it right from your phone, especially with all the editing apps that are available now on the phone. Your pictures need to be sharp. They need to be clear. They need to be detailed. And if you want to add in some fancy editing, you can. And it has to be very clear what your product is. You can still have a lifestyle scene. For example, pottery that's sitting on like a really cool like farm country table maybe or something like that. But it has to be understandable what your product is and be able to see the products. Also, when you get to your individual product photos, when you get over to your shopping pages, make sure that for each product, there's consistency within the pictures and that the pictures are sharp and clear. Okay, enough said about that. I think we all understand that pictures are important, but I will tell you, If someone doesn't like the style or doesn't feel comfortable with the quality of the pictures that you have, they'll leave and go somewhere else. 
because quality of pictures indirectly, unconsciously leads to the quality of your product. It may not even be true. Your product may be top notch in terms of quality, but if your pictures don't represent that, how is your potential customer to know? Okay, so that's the second one. Third one is branding. I touched on this a little bit right in the beginning with my first impressions, but is your branding consistent from place to place to place? If I was at a booth at a craft show and now I'm coming over to your website, am I seeing the same kind of colors and the same type of style? If it's completely different, that leaves a question about the credibility of the business overall. Point number four, personality. Let's stick with pottery since I pulled that out of the hat today to talk about. If your pottery, in terms of the website view, looks just like two or three other websites that they looked at, what's the reason for someone to choose and select your pottery versus anyone else's? You haven't given enough of a reason to buy from you. So in terms of bringing in personality to your pages, some of that, of course, is done through color and the branding, but also you showing you. I can't stress how important as a maker this is. You know, the big brands don't have to do this. Think of any big brand. Let's say Pottery Barn. They've invested a lot of time, money, years, professionals in putting in the personality into the brand. Creighton Barrel or William Sonoma, all of those, you have an impression already, right? but someone might not know you. So that's where our individual brand comes in and is so important. So how do you interject that personality into a website? Your about page. Don't let it be totally just like a resume, (laughs) you know? Have your about page be in first person. Talk with a customer personally. Let them get to know you. Let them see you in all your quirkiness and craziness and, you know, whatever you stand for, because then people are going to relate to you and you're going to stand apart from any of those other pottery websites that only show products very similar to everyone else's site. So you want to interject personality. And if you don't, it's easy enough for them to jump. All right. Point number five, navigation. If I jump over to your website and I want to get to know who you are for a second, and then if I like what I'm seeing, then I want to look at your products. Is it easy for me to understand how I can get to all of these places that I want to know about on your website? That's navigation. It's most typical that people have the navigation right up at the top. Some people have them down the side. Either way, if I want to know who you are, where is that about page? Sometimes that's hidden at the bottom. I would suggest for makers, you leave it up front and center so people can see and get to know you. And the page is going to have a lot of personality, as we just talked about. But when I go to your website and I'm looking for something, is it understandable that I can get directed to where I want to go? So first, maybe I want to learn a little bit about you. I want to understand maybe where you're from, what area of the country. Not that it matters at all, but I just want to know. Like, it just makes me feel more connected. Maybe I want to understand a little bit about how you got into your business. I want to know some of the materials that you're using in your product because that helps me decide if your product is for me or not. And then I decide yes. So then how do I get over and look at all the products? Not just the products that are on your homepage. Now I want to see all of my options because I want to make a selection. Where do I go to do that? You want to make it super easy for people to be able to figure out where they need to go on your website to get the answers that they want. What if they have some questions about shipping time or return policies? Within your navigation, wherever it is, at the top, on the side, in the footer, that it's easy to get to so that they can get their questions answered. Because again, if they can't, they'll go to another site that makes it easy for them. Point six, how slow is it for your website to load? Or let me reverse it. Can your website load really fast? The second that I enter your URL, all of a sudden your website pops up. Or you've seen it where it just circles and circles, and then it takes forever for the website to load. That makes people feel a little anxious or nervous. And if it takes too long, they're going to go. We have no time. You know, this life of instant gratification that we live in, we're so conditioned that when we press a button, we want to see things fast. So you want to make sure that your website loads properly. 
Some of the things that clog up the website in terms of its speed for loading, biggest culprit is really, really large files for pictures. You want to make sure that your files are smaller so that they load faster. That doesn't mean that you're affecting the quality of the picture or the detail of the picture at all. You just need to make sure that they load quickly. And then final point is clunky checkout. A checkout system that either I don't understand how it's working, it's bringing me to all these extra screens that I don't understand. This is a very, very critical point because if I decide I'm going to buy something, I add it to my shopping cart and I want to check out, but there's some type of a hiccup there, some type of a glitch where it's bringing me to another page that doesn't make sense to me, it's taking too long. This is where people get really anxious that, you know what, maybe this isn't a true company after all. Maybe someone's taking my money and there's really no business behind it. All of our antennas are on high alert now for things like this, right? This is where all of these barriers that might be happening unconsciously, you don't know, on your website are things that can prevent you from getting sales. Let me review these for you again. The first one is, do they understand right away when they come to your website exactly what you do? This first impression is key. Second, are your pictures clear, crisp, and truly represent the high quality of the product that you make? Third, branding. Do I understand? Is it cohesive? Is it professional? Is it consistent from your social media sites or a craft show booth that you have? Now when I come on your website, everything looks similar. Is there personality there? Do I get to know about you? This is point number four. Do I get to know about you as the maker? Why you started? Let me into your life because then I'm going to be interested and I want to support you. Navigation. Do I understand where I need to go? This is point five. Is it easy enough to maneuver around the site to get to where I want to go, to get the answers that I want that walk me to the sale? Number six, how quickly does it load? If I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs, waiting for your pages to load, I'm leaving. Just the way it is. And finally, at checkout, is there any type of a hiccup, a glitch that makes me question whether this is a true company, or if my money is going to be taken and used elsewhere and never to be seen again. We all are so familiar now with online shopping that we know what the experience should look like. So you want to make sure that when someone's purchasing from you, it's smooth, the screens go from one to another. Everyone understands if it's PayPal, it's going to jump over to PayPal, which is fine, but that the experience looks smooth. This is a little seven-step website checkup. Go place an order with yourself or have a friend go over to the website, someone who's not connected with your business at all. Say, go buy something from my website. Tell me what your experience is, if you can find the products that you're looking for, if you can learn a little bit more about me, something you don't know about me, even though we're friends. What can you learn about with the business? And buy something from me and tell me your experience. So often when we talk about websites, we talk about getting people to the website. You know, how do we draw more eyes to the website? And that is clearly the first step. But another place that people aren't talking about all the time is once we've got people there, you can still lose the sale if your website doesn't have all of these things that I talked about. Because when it does, then people are going to see and find what they want. And as they're checking out, they're going to have confidence that everything is running smoothly. And that is the way you're going to get sales over on your website. That's a wrap. I'm a get to the point kind of girl. And this is what you can expect from these quick midweek sessions. Now it's your turn. Go out and fulfill that dream of yours. Share your handmade products with us. We want them and they bring us both So much happiness.